Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in details. I was running until I wasn't. My hospital stay would have cost nearly $48,000, even with insurance. But with VA, I'll pay zero. And VA is the best, most affordable health care in America for veterans like me. Knowing that my family is waiting at home and a surprise medical bill isn't, that's good for my heart. My service was then. My benefits are now. Get what you earned. Visit choose.va.gov. Not all veterans are eligible for the type or amount of benefits mentioned here. This is Ricey. You've been hearing my friend Josh Arnold, Mr. Money Talk, for years on the Radio and Garage Logic podcast. With the new year approaching, I strongly recommend you sit down with Josh for your no cost, no obligation, 48 minute consultation on your investments, including your IRA and 401k. You can benefit from Josh's years of experience navigating different market and economic conditions, and he'll always give you straight talk and not sugar coated advice. Give Josh a call now at 952-925-5608 to book your no-cost, no-obligation, 48-minute consultation. That's 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did and tell him Ricey sent you. Don't forget to ask, why is it 48 minutes, Josh? Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute. Institute investment advice. Patrick Royce is a paid endorser. Give him a fast 15 minutes. <laughs> Does Pat have a pause today? Yes. Mm-hmm. While well, we were just lamenting that the uh, I didn't even notice if the St. Paul paper had a Super Bowl game story. The Star Tribune does not have a game story. It's got the score. Uh, uh-huh. that's, that's okay. Big, Most people watch the game. They knew what happened. That's the St. Paul edition, apparently, although who knows, I'm, I'm not home. Uh, I, I don't seem to get the late one in Golden Valley as often as I used to. The, uh, and it's sad to say the print is definitely being de-emphasized, and, uh, which, is, uh, which is unfortunate to say the least, but I can't believe that the game ended too late to not get something in print. No. So, yeah, what, what, is your, uh, what is your opinion? Uh, Reavers and I happen to share the same opinion. Other fellows on the show don't. What is your opinion on the behavior of Kelsey to his coach? Uh, well, I think he went over there and was, uh, screaming at him for having him off the, off the field and, uh, which allowed, uh, Mahomes to get sacked. He said, stop taking me out of the game, but I'm sure that he, uh, he got closer to Andy than he thought he was going to and ended up, uh, bumping him and, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's worthy of an apology to say the least, but, yeah. uh, I think they have kind of a chummy relationship, so I'm sure that Andy and uh, something takes place with this team at halftime when they wake up. Mm -hmm. Andy, uh, and of course, when you have 45 minutes in halftime, you got a long time to contemplate what was going on. So, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think it looked good for Kelsey to say the least. And I don't get the I don't get the controversy over San Francisco deciding to take the ball first in overtime. Why was that the wrong decision? What difference does it make? You're each going to get the ball. Uh, I think Romo came up with a very good idea. Well, they feel that uh, if you know what you have to do, it's an advantage. You know, if you if you, if, you, if you don't, you know, if you obviously if you know you need it. Well, Kansas City could have kicked a field goal to tie the game too if they if they got in a bad enough situation. So. I don't see it as a controversy. Neither do I. And I thought Romo made a good point uh, that the uh, defense for uh, 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 San Francisco had just been on the field at the end of the half for a long, at the end of the game for quite some time. 
and uh, was probably tuckered out because you could see both of those defenses mm-hmm. sucking wind uh, in the in the second half. So I, I think Romo made that. That I never occurred to me, but I think that that probably had a lot to do with it. Uh, you don't want to send a tired defense out there to face Mahomes in overtime. You don't want to send any defense out there to face Mahomes in overtime. But uh, somebody, I, uh, I, I I didn't think it was a big controversy. Somebody did a side by side. Andy Reid ran the exact same play at the exact same moment last year against the Eagles, and it worked both times, that play. Yes, it's a wonderful <laughs> play. Uh, different player, right? The, yes. the receiver was different, right? Yeah, Hard Tony play, was but, last yeah. year's player that scored All that the grunting and grinding, and it ended in such a relatively simple play. Yep. And here's what I loved about that last play is they're, they're still feeling bad. When you get down to run down to the three yard line, right? They're they're kind of the defense is kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Before they knew what happened, they lost the game. Mm-hmm. They ran that play in about fifteen, twenty seconds. They knew exactly what play they were gonna run when that happened. But the great thing about this is I I love that play because uh Mahomes does the little look away, you know, look he doesn't look over there to the side, he looks like he's doing it in the middle, but he doesn't do it dramatically with his eyes. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like he's not like he's so he's he's low key in it instead of high instead of over over selling it. He's 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 soft selling it, and then this guy starts running as far left as he you know takes off like a streak. And then turns around and uh, he's got everybody moving that way and boom it's in the end zone the game's over. Was that at the was that the last touchdown against Philly too? Yes, uh, it was the game winning play the, in both and both that was Super Bowls. Game winning both plays. Yep. Well, why change? Huh? Yep. When, you're, uh, when it works because it's uh, it's wonderful in its simplicity, but uh, it was uh, you know you don't. You don't want him to have the ball last. Nope. That's for sure. You don't. Do they get the dynasty label? Oh, heavens yes. I, oh. I suppose, but nobody's ever won three in a row, right? Nope. That was what okay. they were all I'd give him the dynasty level label at three in a row. Yeah, but then nobody's ever been a dynasty. Now, Sam, there's been teams that didn't Denver or Dallas won three out of four and stuff like that. New England won Five, for God's sake. So, yeah, that was a dynasty. And they've been in four of the you. last five I, Super Bowls. Okay, they're a dynasty. <laughs> yeah, and they won three of them. And, uh, yeah, they, they're, uh, you know, they're, 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 what makes them a dynasty is they won it with this team. This yeah. team is not, was they didn't have as many great players as he had on the other teams that won the Super Bowl. And uh, they, if you watched them in midseason, you'd say, no chance. Plus, this team won it going on the road to Buffalo and Baltimore. Yep. The other, the other teams, the other teams that went to Super Bowls played all their games at home. They lost at home to the Raiders on Christmas Eve. Yes, and here's the other thing: the road, the road in the playoffs. Don't forget this: they played Kansas. They played the first home game seven below zero, yeah, right against the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't exactly a home field advantage to play at seven. I mean, it probably was over Miami, but still, playing at seven and below, it takes a while to defrost from that, right? <laughs> yes, and then you got to go to Buffalo, and then you got to go to Baltimore and make Baltimore look foolish. Now, let's not forget how good their defense played uh, the last half of the year. My favorite play, though, was my favorite mor- mor- moron, Martez. Whatever Scantling, what's his, uh, Valdez. What's his name here? Valdez, Valdez Scantling. <laughs> Joe, he's the guy that they throw the little five-yard gain pass to, and he turns around and turns it into a ten-yard loss. Mm-hmm. By, uh, by people. what a! Did you see Mahomes put his hand on the sides of his helmet, saying, "What are you? Doing? What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that was unbelievable. But. It's it's the magic of the NFL too, Such. Three quarters the game was unwatchable. It was right. terrible. Right. It looked like the Gophers versus Iowa. And then 
And then, then uh, everybody's leaving. That's one of the great games I've ever watched. Pat, so. did, speaking of that, did you see? Is it Brett McMurphy? Is that his name? The college football writer on Twitter. Yes. He had a yes. he had the all time tweet when it was you know. Ten to nothing in the third quarter, and he put out a picture of Kirk Ferentz, and the caption just read, "That's a hell of a game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, Kirk, Kirk, uh, Kirk thought it was uh, terrific. <laughs> we'll we'll get back to Brett Mc, McMurphy later, but uh, uh, the, the Super Bowl was uh, is was. Uh, Worth the conversation, to say the least. It's, uh, yeah, I miss it much was, of the beginning to just, I was rooting for Charlie Hoffman to win the tournament in Phoenix. Yes. He lost in a yeah. playoff to Nick Taylor. Pat, uh, I know that that's the tournament every year they turn the fans loose and some uh, hedonistic yeah. behavior is expected, but uh, I thought it got to the point this year where it was just embarrassing. Yes, and I think they're going to have to probably uh, they they close the gates for a while Saturday and cut off liquor sales, right? <laughs> which uh, was really a, somebody was weeping when they had to do that. But they got two hundred thousand people on there, and a hundred and seventy thousand of them don't give a damn about golf. Right? They're just there to party, you know. And the, so, they were uh, diving in the sand traps and doing <laughs> sand angels, and they were yes, slipping down yes. the hills. And and Zach Johnson, screaming. Zach Johnson, freaked out and told those people to shut up. At one point, he yeah, couldn't take yeah, it. Yeah. Well, they they were screaming in the back swing and the whole thing yeah it's it has gotten completely out of hand uh there's no doubt about it and you know how they built this great big structure around the 16th hole there i mean it used to be spontaneous now they built that great big structure right some drunk woman fell out of it she's alive but she's it said non-life-threatening <laughs> injuries Oof. so she uh she, they they assume she was drunk. I don't think they uh, they rushed her off to the hospital when she fell out of the bleachers. It was but, kind of a snapshot of America, wasn't it? It was really <laughs> Charlie. Uh, Charlie hadn't won since 2016, huh? Right. He, was, he added one, and then the guy made birdie, birdie, birdie. Yep. Boy, they're tearing that golf course up, though. Oof. Yeah. You know? So so yes, it was uh, it was uh, it was definitely a party to say the least. Well, then I got back to the game, but apparently I didn't miss much in the early no, going. No, you didn't. Make, oh, San Francisco was like two touchdowns better than them in the first half. They should have had a bigger lead than they did. Uh, the McCaffrey's great, but he had a bad fumble, yep. and then basically the guy the guy getting his foot in the way of the putt was the biggest play of the game, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Kansas City still doing nothing in the second half, and then they get the ball on the 11-yard line and get themselves a touchdown. But uh, Our Wild are out there. Uh, they're playing the night in Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah. They wow. flew I into town. I, I heard that they flew into town during the game yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh really? I bet a lot of uh, Minnesota fans went out there to take in the atmosphere of the Super Bowl, not necessarily go to the game, and then hang around and watch their boy, their red hot wild, uh, take on uh, Vegas. Yeah, and they got their work cut out for them, too, because Vegas is pretty good. Yes. But How about anyway, your gopher well, basketball team, Pat? Up 20 at one point. Mm hmm. Boy, oh boy. Well, uh, it was, uh, here's the deal, though, Joe. I've always had this theory in basketball. When you're making shots, you look pretty good, right? Yeah. The first half, they were, this team, which is very mediocre shooting team, was bombing in three-pointers. Uh, Braden, Braden Carrington is more of a defensive player. I think he made four what they make, Reavers, eight in the first half? Or I did not like watch the game, so I apologize. Oh, I, I didn't oh, see any of it. You weren't really watching the uh, pregame. No, we were, uh, the, the boys and I were outside playing catch with the old baseball yesterday. Oh, okay. So, anyway, uh, they were up 22, which is the second, this is the second largest comeback in Iowa basketball history, wow. somebody told me. Wow. Somebody told me, but the second half, they stopped making shots, and then Dawson Garcia got some kind of an injury and didn't come back. And then the other big guy, Payne, kept getting in foul trouble, committing stupid fouls. And they stopped making threes. 
And then the little point guard, uh, is it Elijah Hawkins? What's his name? The, the guy from Howard. He, like, had a mental breakdown in the last 10 minutes. He was just dribbling all over the place, doing ridiculous things. And, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a pretty much a horrible loss, Joe, and it would have been a wonderful win. Mm-hmm. But here's what's interesting. So you got Caitlin Clark, who, by the way, got beat yesterday at Nebraska, but she plays in that big old Car- Carver Hawkeye Arena is jam packed, sold out, right? Mm-hmm. The men's team played yesterday. That thing wasn't half full. Mm-hmm. It was. They showed the upstairs. It's. I never thought I'd live long enough to see the Hawkeye uh, women be twice as popular as the Hawkeye men. I was so reading something crazy. about her, Patrick, a few weeks ago. Is it possible that she's going to come back for another year because of how much money she's making via NIL? Well, it, it's certainly she's making more money than she would in the in, than a maximum salary in the WNBA. But I would think some of those sponsors would stick with her, right? Like High V and some of those. I, Maybe, I yeah, I, I suppose you know, the shoe companies and that stuff. But they, yeah, she she might get sick of it though. She might say, okay, it's in, this is enough of this. But uh, but uh, it, it depends. I, I guess she could if it's just about finances. She could come back for it because she's probably making a million. Bucks well, maybe she wants to stay close to our guy because aren't they an item? Uh, Garza for the Wolves. Aren't they? Aren't they dating? I did not know that. Yeah, because no, she's been at that. a couple of Wolves games this year. Didn't know that. Yes. Hey, it's Cousin Kyle here once again for Underdog Fantasy. It's the best way to accentuate your sports watching experience on the weekends. Make a little easy money picking higher or lower on your favorite player stats. I like to pick touchdowns. I like to pick how well guys will do in the first quarter. I get really weird with my picks. Last weekend, I was one Mike Evans catch away from making $300 on a $5 pick. Underdog is available in 33 states, including Minnesota. We love it. It's a great time to join. Underdog is the best place to play Pick'ems, so sign up, deposit, use promo code ROYCE to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. That's download the app, use the code ROYCE to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash right now. Select higher or lower on your favorite player and cash in on Underdog. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpcgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text Hope and why four six seven three six nine? Well, he's he's also playing in Des Moines more than he's playing here. True, know, Garza. So I did not. I, I was not up to date with her romantic uh, ventures. So What's her name? Caitlin. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Patrick was the first her. one on I'm this first train. One every no, I was the January of two thousand twenty-two when nobody else in America had ever heard of her. <laughs> I saw her make all these three pointers against Michigan, and I said, I got to see this young lady. And drove to Iowa, went to her high school, went to Iowa City to see her play, and uh, wrote uh, wrote her up. And then, then everybody else jumped on the bandwagon. You uh, were first, though. Oh, I was first. Yeah, yeah. I love I love saying that because he's Iowa. And I put it on Twitter all the time. <laughs> yeah. They get, oh. they get very angry. I they loved your angry. tweet yesterday about the DA calling Andy Reid's play sheet a magazine. No, you know, did you see this? <laughs> that, hey, Joe, I had a chance to. You've been watching games with the with the CP, right? That's so, been a different year, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Taylor Swift because of Taylor Swift. Yep. Right? Yep. You've been watching games with yep. the CP. Yep. Well, I had the privilege yesterday of watching the Super Bowl with just me and my honey. Wow. And I did not realize that her knowledge of football is zero. I, so, I've learned that this year, yeah. The, 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 including the concept of the first down yeah. right, that I had explained this to her. That was like Larry Batson <laughs> trying to describe to me the 10th ad. Yes, the 10th ad. But the good part was she said, why is a San Francisco coach always looking at that magazine? <laughs> the magazine. 
God, I love that. <laughs> he's just reading People magazine. He's got nothing yeah. to do. With it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, it was, so was does great. the DA approve of all this Tay Tay stuff? Oh yeah, but yeah. she's not really into it. She's yeah. not as into it as the uh, mm-hmm. as the old Suture clan and, yeah. and all the grandkids and stuff. They all had fact, Kelsey jerseys I, I on. Think, oh. oh, I don't think Abigail is. Uh, I don't think my granddaughter's that big a Taylor Swift fan beforehand. You know, so I don't think that, that we, there's no there's no f- uh, family pressure on uh, on uh, this situation. No, she didn't. She. Uh, I don't know. What'd you think of that halftime guy? You watch that? Yeah, I thought halftime was not memorable. No, and uh, they needed more volume on his mic, didn't they? Yeah, I didn't. I couldn't hear it. I and think I, that was by design. Good. I'm not. Wow. I don't know Usher. I don't know his stuff. Yeah, you know. No. What is it? What is it? Yeah. he's R and B, hip hop R and B. R and B. Okay, yep. but but a little hippy hoppy in there, but not too bad. A little yeah. hippy and hoppy. A little hippy hoppy, not yeah. a lot, you know. Um, yeah, well, we love I him. looked it up. I looked it up. Usher's his first name, I guess. I don't know. From, What's his last from, name? I can't remember. Smith. But it's Schwartz. Schwartz. <laughs> but, but, but he could have made it up along the way. But yeah. I, you know, I. I don't know. This is the first halftime show I've watched. I, I was really. just glad to find out on the Garage Logic podcast that I wasn't the only one who pulled an Earl Weaver yesterday watching the halftime show when I thought uh, Jameer Dupree was CeeLo Green. Pat does uh, not know either of those. I'm just saying. I <laughs> Either do I. Right. But I know CeeLo. No. But you get the Earl Weaver reference. I do get yeah. the Earl Weaver yeah. reference, yeah. <laughs> But I think anyway. it just I think that I just think the game is just that much closer to my prediction that we're headed towards oh. a Well Roger a was very, in the suite. A very choreographed reality T V no. show. Roger was in the suite no. talking yeah. to Taylor about, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Paul McCartney say, showed up in the booth. In right, Taylor's well, booth. Right? Yeah. I didn't he see that. Yeah. Was he is he on a, is he out and about? Uh, uh, no idea why he was there. Done. He's got the money. He can fly in if he wants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's okay. You know, I think he's okay. But my prediction is, I don't know if I'll be around to see it, but within seven or eight years, we're going to have an AI figure on each team. Uh, On defense and offense, we're going to have an AI guy out there. In what role will artificial intelligence play? Yeah, any position they want except quarterback or something. Oh. Maybe quarterback. You know, they're going to have an AI out there. A that's robot, you mean? Yeah, kind of a robot. That's yeah. uh, part of the whole. Uh, he's just a, 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 a figure there. So, you know. That'd be rather I, eerie. I, yeah, it would, but that's okay. It's, it's, if it's a new advertisement, they're fine. You know, I Roger kept having to ask these questions about Peacocks doing a playoff game and how terrible that was. I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Next year they got one on Amazon already, right? Yep. Chris, yep. didn't I see that? And about five years from now, that's where they're all going to be. That's where yeah. they're all going to be. Whoever's the highest yeah. bidder, you're exactly right. Yeah. Pat, because you tell everything you do in your life on Twitter, I read that you're uh, quite taken with Mick Heron, the guy who has written Slow Horses. Yes, I just started. I'm about two-thirds of the way through. the. I think he's one of the best I've read. And it is amazing that the great thing about reading it is every time Jackson Lamb is being quoted, you see... Gary Oldman saying it. Gary Oldman is so perfect as Jackson Lamb, (laughs) I can't believe it. No, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I giggle that one. (laughs) The other. (laughs) This one was, he's, they heard him down in the bathroom. And then, you know, which is an experience apparently. And then he's upstairs and he walks in. He's having a meeting in his room and they've described this room about what a hellhole it is. Yeah. And he said, uh, and he comes in and says, what a dump. And they all thought he was talking about the room. And he said, no, downstairs. He says, one flush isn't going to handle that one. <laughs> My favorite line so far from him on the TV show is when he goes to the 
He goes down into the catacombs and he meets Molly, the records lady. Yeah, and she's right. sitting yeah. in a wheelchair with no legs. And he says, "Well, Molly, it's been a long time. Been fifteen years. I see your leg hasn't grown back." <laughs> Oh, Molly, God, he's Molly, terrible. Molly, he's horrible. Molly, Molly pops up in the book, in this book I'm reading now. Molly yeah, pops up yeah. in this one. Are you reading <laughs> Slow Horses? Uh, Slow House is the one I'm reading, I think. Slow House. Slow House, Slow House. yeah. I'm reading the second yeah. one. I got the second oh. one. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I just got the second one in the mail. I just got the second yeah. one. I, I bought a couple the other day, and I'm starting. I'm halfway through the first one, but it is. He is. He's never been a no to the point. Nobody else can ever play him. No, you know, you're right. Serious. You know, this is the only guy that could ever play him. Gary Oldman. It's There's only good. three seasons, right? So far, yeah. Yeah, I've they're, seen. They're, they're I've seen the one. first two. Yeah, they're making another one. Okay. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I I read something. I looked him up, and they're they're making another one. And he he went after the role because he would he knew that uh, he knew that he could do it. Yeah. You know? And he's he's great. Well, so, we better pause for Patrick. We better have a pause. <laughs> yes, we need a pause. Uh, I think this pause is taking place in behalf of Brett Paul and Jim Paul's Valley Group of GM Dealers. So I did a little research. How about that on this? We still got the old 0.9% interest rate going on many of the vehicles out there. 1.9 on others. They got 120 cars on the lot at Apple Valley, the way it sounded. And uh, trucks and uh, a wonderful uh, variety of SUVs. And, of course, if you want to be one of us older folks who still drive the sedans and enjoy it, I'm driving a sedan down here. Now that I've figured out the technology, I'm getting a little better at it, driving it down here. So, uh, you know, good prices, good inventory, and these fellas take care of you Uh after you have made the purchase, I have bought my last five or six vehicles out there. I wouldn't be doing that if I didn't trust them impeccably. Jim Paul, Brett Paul, Valley Group of GM dealers. Uh, check them out in Hastings or Apple Valley. Yes, sir. We got uh, Timberwolves uh, and Wild both on the West Coast. Timberwolves and the Clippers, the surging Clippers, mm -hmm. which are loaded with uh, superstar players, are playing for first place tonight out on the West Coast. Uh, the Clippers have been by far the best team in the league since about January 1st, since they got James Harden, who has decided he wants to play because he wants the new contract. And they got Paul George, and they have the great Kawhi Leonard, who also is known to miss thousands of games, but when he plays is fantastic. So uh, they're playing for first place tonight, and uh, the Clippers... It's been a long haul for them to get the first. Excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Uh, it's been a long haul for them to get uh, the first place, but they can get there tonight if they beat our boys out in L.A. We I think got it's a, on TV. Is, is it a national TV one, Reavers? I it, think uh, it is. You know? I think tonight is. We need a baseball note. Uh, Nick Gordon's gone. Yes, that's okay. They got right. uh Austin Martin, I wrote about him for Sunday. Same kind of player, but uh, a little more, of, um, you know, future. Uh, he's going to probably end up being Buxton's backup in center field or the center fielder. Uh, same kind of player. He's going to be 25, puts the ball in play, runs like the wind. Uh, he was the number five overall draft choice when he was taken by uh, Toronto in 2020. And uh, he's uh, he's an athlete, and uh, I think they still got to train in him. I think they're going to still try to get rid of Kepler. No, Gordon, but too, he sure. was the, Pat, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Gordon kind of was the the last one of those top, remember they had, the Twins had you know, yeah. like eight straight years of top ten picks, and yeah, basically he, he none was, of them panned out. Yeah, he was fifth overall. He was uh, number five overall, too, just like. Uh, Tyler J. Uh, and Martin. all those other guys that they I think, took. I think he got picked because of family uh, heritage, <laughs> you know, his, yeah. uh, his older brother and his dad. Tom Gordon. Tom Gordon. Remember Tom Gordon? Uh, yes. Duke, the yes. right handed pitcher from Kansas City? Yes. Tom had himself a lot of kids. 
mm-hmm. and uh, a couple of them ended up in the big leagues. So mm-hmm. uh, Tom is a uh, Tom was an interesting cat, uh, big curveball. But I, I think, I think is a legendary story about uh, he was rather young when he had his first child, and uh, and uh, and kept at it for a while. So uh, anyway, he's got a bunch of he's got a bunch of kids. The Timberwolves <laughs> at the Clippers Him is, is BSNX. Oh, so that's oh, the. No. Uh... That's not good. Well, that's, that's you, what do you care? Right. Well, you do care because you're in Florida, so you were hoping for national right. TV. I was hoping for an NDA.com, or, yeah, that was true. But I sat and watched the whole Gopher game yesterday, and that was disgusting enough. I don't need more of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you later this week. All right. We'll see you on uh, football. Just give the bride a call. The I magazine. I'll ask her what magazine he was reading. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>